Hello, and welcome to the Not So Sunday podcast, where we talk about what it looks like to live like Jesus more than just one day a week. Hey, Casey, what's going on? Hey, it's good to be here. Welcome, viewers. Uh, last time we called you the weekdays. I don't know what we're going to call the you. The weekenders. Weekenders? No, that-, that was that was uh, the other thing. <laughs> oh, it's not them. The fans of the weekend were the weekenders. We'll just call you people. What's up, people? What's up, peeps? It's good. Good to be with you guys. We're thinking about doing something a little bit different. We give you guys a lot of life updates very often. So right. So you're probably getting tired of it. You're like, I don't want to personally You're like, I don't know care you. about what's going on with those two. Like, we know you have a conference and you have a baby. Thank yes. you for sharing. We're yes. sorry. We just want you guys to know us as much as we want to know you. We're just you. trying to keep you in our, you know, invite you into our lives. We want this to be a family. Yes. But, but we're not going to talk about ourselves today. No, we're not going to talk about those. We're going to talk about books. Yes. Uh, you've heard us talk about books. Literally the last episode, we were talking about our uh, need for an intervention in the buying and purchasing and yes. reading of books. Might be more the purchasing than the reading, but it's okay. Yeah. Don't don't call us out on it. There's never I don't think you there's a thing that thing as too much reading. Like you can never read too much. Reading is a good but thing. But you I think you can buy too many books. You can buy too many books and my bookshelves that are overflowing yeah. at my house and in my office. I feel like this is one of those things I want to know does the, have you ever seen Mark Batterson's bookshelves in his office? No. It's crazy. I I kind of want to know from him I, if Ooh. you're listening to this Mark, I don't know why you would be, but Pastor Mark Batterson, if you're listening, have you read all those books? Cuz it's beautiful. It's crazy. There's books going this way on the shelves uh-huh. and then in front of them there's books going <gasps> this way. And oh, then as he's doing like series prep, there's piles of books on the I ground. Love, ooh, that's what it reminded me it's when like I It's like a cave. Like I was the person when I had to write my exegetical papers for class, I would have like 20 Bible commentaries and dictionaries and and buy different translations of the Bible all over my table and like that makes my heart happy. Because I'm a nerd. Just the smell of the fresh paper. And, the- <laughs> and I do like holding an actual book. Like, I mm. listen, I don't, don't want to mislead you. I listen to Audible. I have a Kindle. But, but there is something about physically holding a book. Ooh, I like it a lot. Books are great. They are. All right. Hey, so what are you the, reading? Wait a minute. If you're in the Detroit area and you haven't been to John K. King bookstore yet, you need to go. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Oh. What a great place. And then there's another one. Take an uh, Allegra before you go if you have allergy issues. There's out. one called the Dawn Treader. <laughs> the Dawn Treader? The Dawn Treader. That's in Ann Arbor. Dude, are you and holding out on me? No, not, I guess so. I, I I have like a love-hate relationship with it because it's the one of my favorite bookstores ever. But every single time I'm in there, I get hurt. Like they have those like, you know, those little metal steps that like you can Please go to the higher shelf. Please help me understand how you get heard of bookstore. You know what I'm talking about? Like those little steps that go on, like, so you can reach higher on the shelves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yes, the ones that are I do. all metal. I do, I do know what you're talking about. I need them. I trip on them. We were out there for our one year uh, wedding anniversary and I tripped and fell and cut my leg open and was bleeding because, and not, not of their fault, but just because I was so interested in books, I forgot to look wow. at the ground too. So you need a lesson in walking is what you just right. told all of us. Okay. I'm doing great with reading, but walking I could use some help on. So if any of you guys are expert walkers, send me a DM. Maybe Casey can learn how to walk with his child. That would be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> we can walk together. I got you, Lana. We'll walk. We'll figure it out. All right. So what are we reading? What are we reading? What are we reading? I am reading. So our lead pastor here at the Woods Church, John McDonald, has asked all of his staff and his board to read the book, Teach Us to Pray by Corey Russell. So I great book. am in that book right now and I am loving it loving it. Um, It is such a, it's a powerful book. So highly, highly, highly recommend it. In fact, a little bit of what we're going to talk about today kind of springboards out of a little bit that we've read and some other things that God's been stirring up in us. Absolutely. What are you reading, Case? Um, I am not reading that currently. I know that you just said that like that were the expectations that we're all reading it. Well, you already read it. I'm looking through my notes again. I love that book. I've read it twice so far and I will read it again one day. Um, I read it twice so far. Okay. Congratulations, okay. Case. I'm just going to stop reading Casey's now. Casey's an overachiever. Um, so I didn't he, read it this year. I read it like last year or something. But I'm reading another Corey Russell book actually called The Fellowship of Burning Hearts. Mm. And it's, it is a conversation between him and one of his life, not lifelong, but like ministry long spiritual brothers okay. talking about the role and relationship of brotherhood in, mm. the, in their lives and in their callings. And oh, so is this where you got your sermon? So Casey preached a sermon recently on uh, Moses and Aaron. Yeah. Is that? No, actually, there's a funny story behind this. Like, so I was, I was reading a couple books and kind of like 
I had gotten tired of the themes and the content of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I asked my wife, uh, like literally a day before I was going to preach that message, like, hey, I want to start a new book. Just choose one of the ones I have. And she chose this book and it was perfectly aligned with what I was already writing. So I was like, okay, we know this is the Lord. That's cool. I love it. So I'm reading that book right now. I'm listening to uh, Long Obedience in the Same Direction or in One Direction. I forgot what the name of the book is. Eugene Peterson. Yes, Eugene. Um, And then I've got a book here that I'm reading that we'll talk about later. Uh, It's a good recommendation recommendation for everybody. Um, and then I am listening to, cause I love listening to multiple books mm-hmm. and going back and yeah. forth. Uh, uh, Mark Batterson is one of my favorite. We I talked know. about him earlier. Yes. He's one of my favorites, uh, but he ha- is a book. Um, oh no, I did. I forget the name of the book already. Um, Uh-oh. it's about miracles. Uh, and it's got a really like kind of like grim name, but it's a really okay. positive book, which is really funny. Um, oh, hold on one second. I will find it for you guys because Audible is just a touch away. It is. See, this is the kind of thing you wouldn't do on a Sunday robber, morning. The Grave Robber. The Grave, grave robber. robber. And it is such a good book. Like uh, I've been, I like take little notes and nuggets and just put them uh-huh. in my phone. And then I just scroll through them and like laugh as I'm like, oh, this is so encouraging. I so love that. That's kind of like all that I'm reading right now. All right. Okay. So usually I'm reading multiple books too, but you, you win. It's not a competition. You just listed like five books you're reading at one time. I get excited. I I mean, I do too, but (laughs) oh my God, you can tell, you can tell. Hey, let's talk to Casey. Let's check on on Casey in six months from now when the baby's a little bit more entrenched in his world. How how many of those books you're reading? I'll be like, I am currently reading... Something about a small bear. Casey's going to get more and more sleep deprived as the season goes on. <laughs> if I start saying things that don't make sense, uh, we're just going to call this the not a podcast podcast. We're going to blame it on baby brain. But no listen, sleep Sunday podcast. We love to recommend books, read books. One of our favorite authors, or I shouldn't say he's, I don't know if he's one of yours. I know you like him, but he's one of my favorite authors. If you're looking for any kind of book on spiritual formation is Henry Nowen. Yeah, I literally just got done reading oh, two of his books. I love Henry Nowen. I bought one of those ones where it's like, here's two books. And then you read them at the same time. And it's amazing. Like the book, is it the book? Is it the wounded healer? Mm. Oh, you guys, if you've never read Henry Nowen and you're looking for some great um, he wrote a book about the prodigal son. Oh my goodness gracious. I read it last year when I was on vacation. It just take some time in your God time and, and open a crack a Henry Nowen book. If, yeah. if, if, if you're looking for a book that reminds you of like what it looks like to carry a heart of mm-hmm. recognition that Jesus loves you, there's a book called Life of the Beloved. Yeah. Oh. And it's, it's, it's such a heart touching book. Like you're like the entire time you're reading, you're like my heart is so warm and I'm so happy and it's beautiful. Yeah. And the way of the heart talks about practicing mm. silence. That was the other book that oh. appeared. Those two came together. The way of the heart is so good. It talks about silence and solitude. And, and it just changed my own spiritual disciplines because yeah. of the information. So we are going to do this from time to time. Actually, I think the last couple of podcasts, we've actually recommended books or mentioned books. Yeah. And so because we believe that if we've got something good, let's share it. Right. Absolutely. Pass it on. And the goal is like not to listen to authors who think the same as you either. If Absolutely. Like, if you're a Catholic person, uh, then don't read only books written by Catholic people. If you're a Nazarene, don't write bo- read books only written by Nazarenes. Yeah. If you are a Baptist, it's not just Baptist. Like expand what you're yeah. reading. Don't obviously you don't need to jump into things that aren't true, right. but jump into things that are different so that you're allowing yourself to continually be affirmed in what you do believe. Yep. And for the Lord to correct us and shape us in ways that we think that He never would. And I think when you read from another person's perspective or point of view, it actually expands expand your ability to show grace when you understand a point of view that you might not necessarily agree with. Like I so often, I love to listen to biographies Mm -hmm. that, and especially an autobiography that's, that is narrated by the, by the person whose life it's talking about. But I think people would be shocked if they knew the listing of people whose autobiographies I listen to because they are not necessarily Christ followers. In fact, a lot of them aren't, but we as as a pastor, as a child of God, I encounter people in the broken world all the time. We all do. And so if you never stop to listen to somebody's journey, perspective, viewpoint, how will you ever have grace? Instead of always trying to correct because you got to tell them what you think is right, sometimes we just need to listen to other people's stories 
And there's power in that. And you get to say, man, I understand where they're coming from now right. and where they've been. So I don't have to necessarily correct them, but I can walk alongside man, them. Man, I listened to one where I was like, this person is so being drawn by the Holy Spirit and they don't even realize it. And it was a really heavy book. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it just because the content, it was about drug addiction, um, but it was a heavy, heavy book. It was an autobiography, but it was so fascinating within this book, this non-believer allowed because he allowed other people in his journey to speak into his story. Mm. And one of the per people ended up coming to Christ and spoke the gospel in her snippets in his book. That's so cool. And I'm like, all these people who are gonna come to this book for one reason are gonna hear the gospel. It was incredible. I've got one more. Okay. Uh, this is a book I read a year or two ago. It's also a biography book. Uh, it's, uh, it's called Carter. It's mm -hmm. a book by Jimmy Carter. It's okay. a collection of conversations mm -hmm. that he had with people of faith. Mm. Because uh, a lot of, like, I, I don't know how many people realize this, but I'm not a very political person, but I love hearing from uh, leaders who have a heart for the Lord. Yeah. Uh, and it is such a cool thing to hear how their stories all intertwine. Again, mm -hmm. similar to that. Yep. And uh, that the whole thing was from this faith perspective. And I was like, man, this isn't something you typically see from a previous presidential person. Right. From someone who had the literally the highest power in our country, mm -hmm. talking about the highest power in our universe. Yeah, I'm like, right. this is beautiful. Yeah, it really so. is. So anyways, we spent a whole lot of time today talking about books. We should have just done this podcast on books. Books. We're, that'll happen. Let's do an <laughs> right. episode. Just on books. We'll do it on location in a bookstore. We should go on location to John K. King. That would be so fun. That would be amazing. All right. When I was don't there, let it, don't let us forget. Don't let us forget. When I was there, I almost bought a Latin Bible. And my husband was like, you don't speak Latin. Why do you want a Latin Bible? And I'm like, it's just really cool. Yeah. I feel like I nerd out there. I accidentally bought three books about Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> just Samuel. Nothing else. <laughs> well, that was your Samuel day at John K. King. Absolutely. All right. On to the topic for today. We have talked a whole lot about books. Maybe we should go back to talking about ourselves. Uh, <laughs> we man. talk less when we talk about ourselves. Oh, goodness. Anyways. We need to get our priorities in order. Oh, priorities. I think we might be talking about the divine order of things. Absolutely. That is our topic for today is getting our priorities straight and, and recognizing that there actually is a divine order to our lives. Absolutely. It's so good. It's so and good. I think that as everyone who is listening knows, like we put value on things and we make everything in a tiered list. Mm -hmm. We live yes. by rules of life that we develop and form based on our faith and our experiences and all of these things. It's called our personal theology. Yeah. But in that, we give everything an order. Yeah. And the reason we do that is because we are created in the image of God and so does he. Absolutely. Unfortunately, though, I think a lot of people struggle and, and a lot of people who love Jesus struggle because their divine order is out of order. What do I mean by that? I mean that the reality, I'll never forget the day I had the conversation with my son. It was years ago, years and years ago that I told Sammy, I said, listen, there's an order to my life. Like God comes first, then your dad, then you and your brother. And he was full Lord. He goes, whoa. How do, how do me and Tino rank third on that list? And explaining to him, really, and it took me a lot. Listen, I, I did not start my marriage this way, okay? It took me a long time and God speaking into me to finally get this to connect, mm -hmm. that my relationship with God has to come first. Yeah, It has to come first. If I'm going to be the best of who I can be in every other area of my life, I have got to have God front and center at the top, spending time with him. So he has to come first because when he comes first, I am a better wife. Absolutely. And when I am a better daughter of God, wife to my husband, I am the best mom I can be. Yeah. And when you're all of those things, mm -hmm. then you will finally be the pastor that God's called you to. Absolutely. But and I love it. It's scriptural. It is scriptural. It's so scriptural. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, it says, all things are put in subjection. It is evident that he is expected who uh, he is expected who put all things in subjection to him. When all things are subjected to him, that is God, then the son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him. 
so that God may be all in all. And that sounds really messy and confusing. So let me break that down for a second. When we look at the kingdom order, it is God, then it is all things below. Right. There is no other place for it. There is no other structure. It is when God is at the top, we understand that Jesus even follows and is obedient to what the Father calls him to, and that everything else fell in place underneath that, that when that happens, mm-hmm. then God can be in all things, in our lives, in everything else. Yep. But what we live, we live like the like the McDonald's ice cream machine. It's always out of order. It's always dysfunctioning. <laughs> it never happens. <laughs> Every time you want to get things right and you want to hit the sweet spot and go like, oh, awesome, it's time for right. some McDonald's ice cream. They're like, sorry. We haven't figured out how to work this thing. Right. And then when we stop and think about it for a second, like that's kind of my life. I'm like, man, have I really figured out how to work this thing? Mm -hmm. Like this thing is always out of order. Why? Because God's not top priority. Absolutely. And I think what happens a lot for us is that when we are in a season of struggle or we need something from God, all of a sudden we put him at the top. Yeah. All of a sudden he becomes our, our top priority because we want him to fix something for us. Yeah. And then as soon as things start to fall into place, God falls down on the list. And then it looks like one of those old school brackets where you are pulling out the different planks of wood and sliding them exactly. in different orders and people are getting stressed out and then somebody's disqualified. Ultimately, it's us. Right. And let me tell you, those brackets, those subsequent brackets, those can change and switch out. And they will. And they will, depending on what season you're, not all of you are who are watching or listening are married or have kids and all of that. So my divine order in my home might not be the divine order of your home. And so those subsequent brackets might all change in different seasons and different times, but the top bracket should be unmovable. It should be solid. It should be cemented there. God first, and then everything else falls. At the end of the day, at the end of our lives, if this tournament is played out well, Jesus takes first place. Absolutely. Every single time. Absolutely. And we don't care about what happens in the meantime. When Paul says, run your race, fix your eye, keep your gaze, fix your eyes on the prize. Yep. The prize is Jesus. The prize isn't a fatter portfolio, greater stock and, you know, greater investments, a bigger retirement package, a, you know, a kid who's a doctor, like those are okay. Those are okay things. Like there's nothing wrong with those things, but that's actually not the prize. The prize isn't the bigger home. The prize isn't the, the flashier car. Those aren't the prize. The prize is always Jesus. And the only way you'll ever keep your eyes fixed on the prize is if God is at the top of the divine order of your life. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit then. If we understand that and we go, okay, God is at the top of the divine order, what comes next? Right. That's a great question. It is a great question. What comes next? And again, you were saying it depends on where you're at in life. Right. But there are a few things that shouldn't, right? And yes. I think that's the bigger thing is like, if we understand what shouldn't come next, then we'll understand what does. Right. And obviously one of the things that we hold on to so tightly and that we often move up to the top of the list is success. Yes. It's our finances. Our finances are important. We have to be a good steward of them and they need an income to survive. But if it falls above people and relationship mm-hmm. and all of these things, then it's going to have a bad place. And then eventually it will work its way to the top of the list. Because what you have to understand is if your order isn't structured well, then everything below God is going to be competing for the top place. A- absolutely. And if, you're, and if your order is instruction, well, not only is it going to compete for the top place, it is going to be very likely that it could bump God out of his top place. Right. And then he's not even on the list. Right of contenders and that's scary and it is scary and it happens and it happens so and the the progression of this is so subtle it is it is a subtle progression to make other things more important than god and so listen there's nothing wrong with going hard after your goals after your dreams like those are all good things like i'm not talking against any of that but if god is not your top priority you are always going to struggle in wondering why the promises of God Mm -hmm. don't come true or don't come alive in your life. Maybe the way you see them come alive in someone else's life and whenever the promises of God, and I'm not talking, listen, sometimes when we say the promises of God, some people take that as a statement of my life is going to be awesome, wonderful, easy, pain-free, nothing bad will ever happen to me. No, 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 no. 
Jesus is not our ticket to easy street. Bad things, hard things, difficult things, disappointment, failure, it comes, that comes to people who have a right divine order just as much as it comes to people who don't. The difference is, is when your divine order is correct, it will, um, it will, it will harness or um, it will dictate um, your response mm. in that season. And so those promises of God, I'm talking about like the peace that surpasses all understanding. Listen, if your divine order isn't right, if God's not number one, you won't have the peace that surpasses all understanding. That can only, because that is such a supernatural thing that it has to come only sourced by the Holy Spirit. And if God is not top priority in our lives, the, that means the Holy Spirit isn't the only one sourcing our lives. And in fact, probably isn't even the greatest thing sourcing our life. Right. And scripture is super evident uh, that we are called and God says not to have any other gods before him. Absolutely. And this is, uh, this uh, that would be idolatry. We're talking about the beginning of the 10 command. Maybe the, it's so out of the easy. 613 laws, these are the first couple of laws. I am the Lord, your God. Yep. You will have no other gods before me talk about a rule of life if that was the first thing and the priority that we obeyed mm -hmm. things would shift so greatly and look this isn't saying you do not get to have other things you're passionate about right look you can be the biggest arsenal fan or the biggest clippers fan or the biggest giants fan with the greatest passion for your team and you could say i love this so much but if you are not a bigger fan of the kingdom right then you are going to become outside of his kingdom. You're going to fall outside of the plans and purposes of the kingdom. And, and I think to, you know, this, we were, this came up in a staff prayer and talking about the Corey Russell book. And it came out of the story of Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. And you've got Martha running around like a chicken with her head cut off. And, you know, there's been books about this, have a merry heart and a Martha world. And yes, our world conditions us to be on the go, on the go, on the go. We are fast. We are busy. We're in a hurry. All of those things. And Martha is running around like a chicken with her head cut off. What she's doing isn't bad. Mm -mm. She's certainly Serving Jesus, ultimately her heart is to serve. She is part of his ministry and his mission. Like she has a heart to serve. But then we find her sister who is sitting at the feet of Jesus and just soaking in Jesus's presence and his words and all of that. And really the what's problematic for Martha isn't what she's doing per se. It's that she's getting upset a little bit that what she thinks what she's doing is actually more important than what Mary is doing. And basically Jesus says, Martha, and like not in a condemning way, but says, Martha, like, listen to me. Mary has found what is best and it won't be taken from her. That doesn't mean that Jesus said, Martha, what you're doing is bad. What he was saying to her is, Martha, it starts in the posture that Mary is in. Yeah. The divine order is you can do all of those things that you like, I love that you're serving me, but I want you to spend time with me first. Right. And that's always the divine. You can do all of the things, but Jesus in his presence, time in his presence has to come first. Right. He's saying, hey, you, your heart's in the right place but you're standing in the wrong posture. Yes. And it's so important because if we separate the two, we see two different characters. Right. But if we align the two, we see the people of God. Right. When you look at that so often, anybody who has any significant meaning in scripture started off in a place of sitting before and then we're sent out. Yes. You look at Samuel. I was, we were just talking yep. about the book. So it reminded me, um, Samuel sat and laid in the presence of God being ministered to in the temple continually. Right. And then he goes out and lives a life that followed the calling of God and shaped the direction of his people. Right. Well, and look at Paul. Right. There's a reason why when Paul has that encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, that in those three days of blindness, what was happening? He was being ministered to by God. Like God literally was transforming him. And that could only happen in a pre in a posture of absolute, like he was laid out before God. He couldn't do anything else. And then he was sent out. Yep. The sending did not come immediately. He needed to spend time in God's presence and have God minister to him first. That's the divine order.
Always. And it should apply in our lives as well. Absolutely. Always. I love uh, Dick Eastman. He uh, was the head of, and I, I think he's still like the chief prayer officer of every home for Christ. Okay. And the reason that his life has such great impact for the kingdom mm-hmm. like to this day is because it is founded in the place of prayer. His posture is, I will go before God and God will send me to his people. A- absolutely. And I think, I, I, I don't know that we intended this, but it really does come back to that place of prayer. It comes like God has really, this has been the year, this has been the year for me where God has really given me the light bulb of proximity Mm -hmm. is what fuels our passion. Yeah. And so whatever you keep yourself in the closest proximity to is what is going to fuel everything else you do in your life. So if you are in closest proximity to your ambition for success, then that ambition for success is what will fuel your life. If you're in closest proximity for your desire to put your kids in every activity known to man under the sun at every at all given times and you never have a moment of rest, then that is what's going to fuel everything that goes on in your life. Right. But if you're in close proximity to Jesus, he will fuel everything you do. And you know what? That might take you and you'll be able to do some of those other things, but the priorities will be right Absolutely. because they will be his priorities, not just your own. Absolutely. And I think to, to just make sure that you guys understand well what proximity looks like. Proximity doesn't look like we're always chasing an unattainable God, a God who's walking before us and we can't catch up with him, right? right? Proximity to Jesus looks like my heart and Jesus' heart unified. It looks like my spirit and his spirit unified. It looks like him living out through us. And that's what proximity looks like. You're saying, not only am I going to live with Jesus as the head of my household, the head of my life, but I'm going to allow him to be the very source of intimacy and fuel and all of these things because he's already in there. Absolutely. It's not a searching for God. It's a recognizing him. Right. And just chasing after it. And and really, this is what proximity isn't because I think in the church world, in the modern church world, this can get real confusing. And I don't want this to be confusing to you because some people will think proximity equals doing. Yep. So if I'm at the church on Sunday morning doing, you know, attending church, but then I'm part of the mom's group and I'm a part of this and I'm a part of that and I'm serving here and I'm serving there and I'm doing this and I'm doing that, then I'm close to Jesus. No, you're doing a whole lot of activities for Jesus, but you're actually not close to him. Proximity begins in the secret place. You know, there's another great book, Bob yep. Sorge, Secrets of the Secret Place. Um that's where proximity starts. It's in that private, personal, sacred, secret place of just you and Jesus. Yep. That's what we're talking about. Nothing wrong with serving the church. You should serve in your local body of Christ. Absolutely. But we confuse that sometimes with the doing for Jesus, with being close to Jesus and oftentimes they're not the same things. Right. Because you can be doing all week long for Jesus. You can be in every activity in the church but you haven't spent a single moment in intimate prayer with him. That's a disconnect. That's an eruption, an, an, an interruption of the divine order. Yeah. And actually it is an eruption because it blows it up and makes it fall apart. Right. That's it does. Thing. And like when we get to that point where we understand, okay, so if it's about proximity and proximity is the source and it's not the doing that we understand that proximity isn't what we do and don't do. It's who we become. Right. And that's, that's what that it's calling case. us to. So what is the dino, divine order? It's placing God first and becoming what he's called it to be, mm-hmm. allowing everything else to fall sequentially under that because of who he is. And if we are in him and he is in us, then he is in all things and he will place the priority in the order and the structure. So we submit, we yield, we abide, and we pursue. And we say, God, I'm doing this. My eyes are fixed on you. It's not the tasks. It's the intimacy. It's the moment. And that is the order. It's you first. And then it'll begin the structures that we were talking about. Like for you, it's your husband and then your kids and then X, Y, and Z. Right. And for me, it's my wife and then my soon-to-be baby that's almost here. And then it's all of the other things. And for me, I often tell people, and some people argue with this, there's going to be many seasons in my life where my close spiritual friendships will come before my job at the church. And people will be like, well, that's 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 neglectful. Right. And I was like, no, but if that person isn't part of the process and my close brothers aren't keeping me accountable, then the fuel isn't there. And I'm taking the order that Jesus placed of accountability out. And I'm saying, 
if I do my work, then I won't have to hold accountable. Absolutely. You know, I, I love that you said that case because I think there's some people who would even listen to my listing of God, my husband, my kids and say, well, wait a minute, you're a pastor. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't that be in the top three? Actually, no. It can't. It can't be because my first ministry is to my home, to my family. And quite honestly, if my family is out of order and things are chaotic in my family, how do I minister well as a preacher and teacher of the gospel if I am in chaos in my personal life with my husband and my children? Like that is, the, and that's the thing about divine order yeah. is understanding that that doesn't mean that I don't take my ministry very seriously. Of course I do. I understand the full weight of it and carry it and, and really feel the, the weightiness of it. Um, but that's even more reason to have things in proper order order yeah. because nothing is done well when it's done out of order. Right. And that's what causes chaos in our lives. And we talked in the last episode about purpose and calling. And the reality is, is if the divine order in our lives is not right, we will never walk in the fullness of our purpose and our calling. Right. Like they go, they actually go hand in hand a little bit. Absolutely. I had a, a dear friend that we used to go get coffee with often. And uh, we had all like me and him and our other friend had recently gotten married all in the, within the same like two year span. And, um, one of the things that he always reminded us, he's like, man, you guys have a lot of stuff going on as pastors. Uh, and he's, he wasn't a pastor, but he always had this conversation with us. And his, his heart was always like, if we all pursue God together and that we all talk about how to become better husbands, then you guys will be greater pastors and I'll be able to do what I do better too. Yeah. And I loved that because even in that process, I, you could see such an aligning of like, if that relationship wasn't there, right. then there was going to be areas where we were blind to what God was doing. And it was such, it's such a reminder. I think of that often as I'm making a cup of coffee, like, man, like I had a friend who consistently poured into me the desire to like, I want to see you be the best husband you can be. And I want you to keep me accountable to do the same so that we're pursuing Christ together. And so that we're ministering to the most important people in our lives. Well, well, and that is the very, what you just said, Casey, mm -hmm. is the very essence of what Paul is talking about in Ephesians chapter five, verse 21, when he says, therefore submit to to one another yep. out of reverence for Christ. Yep. Help each other reach your maximum potential before God because you recognize what Jesus has done for you and he is top priority in your life. And so your goal is to help others reach their full potential yeah. before God. That so is such a beautiful explanation of submission. Yeah. And I think that like, that's, that's kind of where we have to get to. And like, yeah. this is even a good place to start to get to that last kind of point of wrapping it up and I'll, I'll leave it to you, but I want to leave a thought real quick. Um, when it comes down to the divine order of our lives, it takes intentionality. Absolutely. And it's going to take you sitting down and maybe even grabbing a piece of paper and going to the place of prayer and saying, God, if you're first, what comes next mm -hmm. and what comes after that and God, what doesn't get to make the list and then being okay with it and saying, you know, like if there's things in my life that I prioritize before you, God, I need those out of the way first. But if there's those, if there's things that prevent me from abiding, you can get rid of those entirely. I don't need them. Right. And I think that it's good for us to remember that once we get that list and it is, I think that's great. I think that's a great practical step because I do think it needs to be a little bit self-reflective and it's so easy. Like here in my heart, it's so easy for everything to get skewed. Seasons of life, things get crazy. So don't beat yourself up over it. It is why it's good to have those God search me and know me conversations. Yeah. If there is any way in me that is not pleasing to you or if anything's out of order, God reveal it to me, help me to know so that no matter what I do, no matter where I am, I'm doing it for the glory of the Lord. That's really why having your priorities and that div divine order is so important. That means that everything that comes below that, it means that you do it, whether that's being a spouse, raising your kids, you know, executing your profession, being, you know, in a social group, going out and having fun, whatever you do then that follows, you will do it for the glory of the Lord and mm -hmm. to bring honor to his name. Because when he is top, that means you have allowed him to have full authority and lordship 
over your life. And that's the game changer. That was that is the piece that will usher you into all of those promises, like having the peace that surpasses all understanding. That's so good. I think we need to stay in that for a second yeah. longer. So uh, I think let's do something different okay. today for prayer. Uh, for those of you who are engaging and listening, uh, I want you to open your hands in a posture of receiving. Mm. And Nikki, would you just pray that over them and yeah. like have this moment where you guys say like, I want to accept the divine order of things. I want to follow in the divine call to put God at the top and to be subject to all things under Christ. Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we come before you, God, and we say, search me and know me, God. Father, would you reveal any way in us where we have had uh, things out of order, God, because that is really what we desire right now in this moment. We desire to receive your wisdom. God, would you pour yourself into us so that we can give you everything so that we can reorder our lives to put you at the top. God, in in a unmovable place, God, would we cement you as the Lord of our lives, fully surrendering ourselves to you so that you have full lordship over us. God, we want you to be number one so that we can walk in the fullness of of who you have called and created us to be so that we can give you honor and glory in all that we do. So God, for everybody who is listening and praying in this moment, God, I just pray for a divine revelation. God, if there's anything out of order in their lives, God, would you reveal it to them? And Holy Spirit, would you just capture their hearts and posture their hearts to a place of complete and total surrender to Jesus? Mm. God, whatever you may fall on any anybody's list. May right now as we pray, you move right up to the top and may you move there and be unmovable as we passionately pursue you, God. God, we give you ourselves today as a living sacrifice and God, we will give you all of the praise and all of the honor and all of the glory because only you are worthy of it. In Jesus's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Man, that's so good. Uh, just one thing real quick, a practical step for you again. I love practical things because it helps us to develop. If you are the head of a household, uh, if you are a husband or a wife with children, uh, this book right here, uh, Justin Winland Early, uh, The Habits of the Household is such a great tool because it is really a way to practice putting God first and to say that God will take the first place in the divine order of our household and allowing things like bedtime routines and meals together and the time spent taking people to places and the time spend unplugging as a family and like really what does it look like to have those fall subject to Christ not in a way that is like a dictatorship but in a way that's relationally intimate mm -hmm. for your family and for your Lord such a beautiful book I love that what a great rich conversation today I love talking about making God the Lord of our life giving Jesus full authority and allowing the Holy Spirit to completely source us and so I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and until we see you again may you continue to passionately pursue God and relentlessly reveal Jesus to the world every day of the week <laughs> take care see you soon see you later